And welcome to another update. In this one, I'll be covering the whole front line. So I'll be starting out with the front line updates. Then I'll be covering the territorial changes, after which I'll be following it with an analysis of the current situation, as well as the fighting going on. So starting out in the north, the Russian forces have managed to continue their operations by Kremina, where the fighting continues northeast of Makivka, west of Lushenka, west of Chernopopivka, southwest of Chernopopivka, west of Kremina in the direction of Serishne, south of Diprova in the direction of the Serebriansky forest area, and southwest of Kremina in the same area. Fighting also continues by Belorivka and Verkhnokamyansky, where the Russian forces continue their attacks. Then we also see by Selesnyansky, the E-40 highway, Uruhove Vesilivka, west of Dubove Vesilivka, in the direction of Bohdanivka, Pomove. Within the city itself, there's a lot of fighting in the direction of Ivanivsky. And that is all for the Bakhmut front, after which we move on to Evdeivka, where the Russian forces continue their attacks in the direction of Kamyanka, southwest of Evdeivka, north of Odiana in the direction of Severne, west of Odiana in the direction of Pervomaisky to the north, the center of Pervomaisky, southwest of Pervomaisky in the direction of Nevelsky, in the Marinka area, to the north of Marinka, and to the south in the direction of Pobieda, east of Novomirailivka, and east of Uledar. As for the territorial changes, we have some within Bakhmut and some outside of Bakhmut. So starting out in the south, we see that the Russian forces have managed to capture this tiny forest patch here to the west of Novo Bakhmutivka, where they have managed to capture these two forest lines. And this is most likely to gain a better position here by the highway, allowing them to cut off the intersection here to the north and allowing them to cut off the supplies through the roads between the north and the south of this area. So this area is actually most likely very well defended by the Ukrainian forces. And at the same time, we see the Ukrainian forces did a small push here to the south of New York, where in the direction of Novosilivka, the Ukrainian forces pushed the Russian forces back to control over this forest patch and push back the Russian forces a tiny bit. Then the final territorial changes outside of Bakhmut is this area to the south of Kremina, where the Ukrainian forces managed to capture the last bit of this road and the intersection here to the south of Kremina. Then we see here by Bakhmut itself, fighting continues within the city and the Russian forces have managed to capture this final part of the residential area here to the south. And in the central area, they've completely captured the Hotel Atlantic block, reaching the Kowalska Street here from the north, and allowing them to push beyond the current Ukrainian positions, where they're attacking the stadium here to the north from three, other, from three directions, and the stadium to the south from three directions. And then we move on to the analysis, where here we start out to the north, where the Ukrainian forces have launched a drone strike against a Russian BMP by a hidden. So essentially the Ukrainian forces are continuing to try to grind down the, the Russian firepower here to the north in the Luhansk region. We also see here by the Dibrova area in the Serebriansky forest area, where the Ukrainian forces recently pushed back the Russian forces. This is a perfect example of the active defense tactics the Russian forces are using. If you click on the link in the map or check out my telegram, you can see the source of deep state map where they say that two Russian tanks advanced to this intersection after which they shot at Ukrainian air defense mechanisms and then they retreated. So essentially what they're doing is that they push a bit to get a better position, shoot at the Ukrainian forces, and then they retreat to the previous position, which is properly fortified and entrench themselves. So what kind of action is this? Is that the Ukrainian forces have the frontline troops and then they have the backline troops. Backline consists of artillery, air defense, and so on, while frontline consists of infantry and armored vehicles and so on. So the Russian forces are actively defending by pushing back the Ukrainian frontline infantry. And as soon as they are in a rotation or in a similar instance where they are weaker than normal, the Russian forces attempt a breakthrough to hit at the Ukrainian backline, which is the target of their forces. So essentially the Russian forces are trying to defend the frontline and the Ukrainian forces continue their attacks. Whenever they see an opportunity, they push. 
and if the Ukrainian forces succeed, then they fall back. Trying to avoid confrontation as much as possible, while still holding significant areas which they have determined to defend. As for the Bakhmut area, then I have this update by Remy Lind, and I'll just read it out loud as it is the best possible way to explain the current situation as he had a phone call uh, last evening with one of the two Wagner soldiers he knows within the front line in Bakhmut, and this is the conclusion from that situation report. So the first point is that during the night time, heavy fighting throughout the city, especially through and around the marketplace, police stadium and two sta police station and two stadiums. In the evening, Wagner managed to completely conquer the Hotel Atlantic. So we have the marketplace, which is this central area right here, the two stadiums, which is this one and the southern one, and the police station, which is here to the north. So the four main points of attacks for the Russian forces is the state police station, the marketplace, and the two stadiums. So that is the current focus of the Russian forces in the east of the rail lines and in the central part of Bakhmut. So what we can determine from this is that the, ma the major push is from the north and central area, where the Ukrainian positions is left to be a small triangle here to the north, and the Russian forces are trying to just push through the center of it. At the same time, we see them try to control the central area by pushing through to the stadium as well as the marketplace in the center. And at the same time, we see them attacking the stadium here to the south. If they manage to capture these two parts at the same time, they'll be able to push and take control over the east of the rail lines. So with the current rate of success, the Russian forces could take control over the east of the rail lines within this week. Then as for the second point, we see that this capture of the Hotel Atlantic block allowed the Wagner and Russian forces to reach the Kowalska Street. And since then, fierce fighting is taking place in that area, specifically the Amonrad Stadium, which is now attacked from three sides. So the Evan Red Stadium is this one here to the south, and attacking from this three sides is the southern side, southwestern side, and the western side. The Russian forces also fighting by Kowalska Street here to the north. So essentially, the significance of this capture allows the Russian forces to now advance southwards through this street and westwards from the street, which will allow them to take control over this area and encircle the stadium which is why he mentions that the Ukrainian forces may be soon forced to retreat from the stadium as the Russian forces would otherwise threaten a encirclement of the area. And at the same time, we also see that to the northern side, by the central stadium, the Russian forces are now also three controlling areas to the three sides of this, the southern area by Hotel Atlantic, the northern area by the marketplace, and the eastern side by the educational complex. So essentially, the Russian forces are now three-prone to operational encirclement of both stadiums, and they are frontally assaulting the state police station and the marketplace. As for the third point, in the northwestern sector of the city, fierce fighting continues for Rose Alley. Wagner was able to achieve minor tactical successes here. In the southwest of the city, the intensity of the fighting has decreased somewhat. Both sides attack sporadically. So essentially we see here to the northwest, fighting is mainly focused around the Rose Alley, which is this open field here with a park, a youth center, and this Rose Alley, which is also somewhat of a park. So the reason there's a lot of fighting that happens here is because of this park here, which is somewhat of an open field. So the Ukrainian forces to the southwest of it and the Russian forces to the northeast of it are fighting across this area. If they want to storm through it, then they would be out in the open, which allows them to be easy targets. So essentially the Russian forces have to either go around or push through this area. And that is very difficult because the buildings, this, this sort of buildings to the north and the south of it are buildings which are better fortified and better equipped than these eastern parts that are just smaller residential buildings where these are more high rise and concrete block buildings. 
So essentially, this is a very well fortified position and it will be very difficult for the Wagner and Russian soldiers to push through it. And most likely what the Russian forces are looking to do is push through the western part, taking control over the rail lines and then pushing through the central residential area here in the northeast of the Ukrainian held territory. As for the southwestern parts, he says that the fighting has significantly decreased and that is most likely because of the heavy focus of the Wagner soldiers in the central part of Bakhmut, where essentially they focused most of the soldiers in this area, which means that they have most likely drawn soldiers from the southwestern and northwestern areas to focus on this central area so that they could push through with everything they had. And this had allowed them to gain their current advances, but at the same time, it weakens their southwestern flank, which is why we're seeing no advances here, but only a stalemate by both sides as they are focusing on the fighting in the center. Then we move on to the fourth point, which is about the flanks, where the Russian forces are now attacking in the Orohova Vasilivka area to the north on the side, and they've reached the village from the north. Fights are already taking place in the village, first successes can be seen. So essentially what we're seeing is that the Russian forces are now attacking Oryhova Vasilivka from this northern side, which allows them to have a flanking maneuver on the Ukrainian defenders within the city, within the village, which allows them to properly advance within the center, as well as the northern side, allowing them to get a better position within the village. He then talks about Bohdanivka, where the Wagner storm troopers are still entrenched in the first houses and are trying to advance further. Little success so far, position battles take place around Komova. So Bohdanivka, they have entered the village and are fighting within the first villages, but that is all, they haven't really gotten into it properly, and the Ukrainian forces are heavily fortified and are defending this well, preventing any Russian advances within the village. And the fighting by Romova isn't within the village itself, but in the positions around it, as both sides are trying to get better positions to prevent the fighting from happening reaching Romova, while the Wagner soldiers are trying to advance to the roads and try to enter Romova from the northern sides. Then he sums up by talking about Ivanivske, where he says the Ukrainian forces managed to gain some ground, but at night that mostly charge changes again, and Wagner plus Russian forces regain the lost area. It's happening every day now. So essentially, Ivanivske is a lot of back and forth, where the R R Ukrainian forces fight during the day, try to push back the Russian forces, of which they succeed, and then the Russian forces during the night time push them back with their night vision and night... with the nighttime equipment, with night vision and so on, that allows them to have the advantage during night times. So the Russian forces are stronger during the night and the Ukrainian forces are stronger during the day around the Ivanivska area. And then he sums up with, in general, in the city, the situation for Ukraine continues to deteriorate. They will have to retreat to their last line of defense on the flanks. The situation is by and large rather stable. No major breakthroughs so far. So essentially what he's saying is that on the flanks, the Ukrainian forces are able to hold on and protect their flanks, preventing a Russian uh, encirclement of the city as they keep reinforcing these areas. And they have proper supply routes to Bohdanivka, to, to Rihorivka and so on. So they're able to properly defend these areas. While within the city itself, the situation is deteriorating. The Ukrainian forces cannot hold enough troops to properly defend all of its flanks because of the current situation on the front line, which is a... If you look at it like this, we can see that the circumference of the front line is in favor of the Russian forces, as they can attack from three different directions, from the south, from the east, and from the north, while the Ukrainian forces have to push all their troops in the center and have to split them up in all three directions. And this is very significant because the Russian artillery working in this direction they can just add a lot of artillery from all three directions and just shoot down into one location that hits all three f parts of the Ukrainian forces. While the Ukrainian forces have to split up their artillery and attack in each direction separately, so they have to split up the attacks in all three directions. So this is the significance of concentrating the opponent's forces in a small pocket while they spread out your own forces, which allows you to determine 
which allows the Russian forces to just focus all of the attacks in one single place and attacking all Ukrainian forces at the same time with that strategy. So recently there's been very heavy shelling of Bakhmut itself, which has significantly increased specifically since yesterday. And that is the situation currently on the front line and in Bakhmut. And that is all for this video. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.